Hello there, my name is Anthony Barocas with StreamTech. Today we're going to highlight what's new and exciting in the Magewell update of March 29th, 2024. Let's get right to this. Here I've got my Magewell all set up here. It has already been set up with the update. And the thing that I noticed first is when you plug in your display port, it's going to come up with an all new menu clean program, which is what we've had before, clean preview. So now you've got preview and program. You can always see the preview, which is something that we have not had before. And this is very exciting, very, very useful. Multi view, we're gonna look at that. Duplicate screen, which duplicates this screen. That is what we've had before. Loop HDMI one and loop HDMI two. We've had both of those before. Let's take a look at this multi view. Here we go, we've got preview and program as well as each of our sources. This is fantastic because especially if you want to use the Director Mini as a control surface, it's difficult to navigate your way around and see everything. Also, you can leave your graphics up here. Let me switch to the overhead again. You can leave your graphics up on the Director Mini and then be able to see your picture sources on your preview monitor. This is a fantastic update to the Director Mini and makes it more useful because now you can distribute your tasks across multiple monitors. Before you could distribute tasks across different control surfaces, but now that monitor out is much more useful. The next really big feature that I think Director Mini users are really going to like is bonding. So here I have Ethernet plugged in. I've got my Wi-Fi connected. Now the Wi-Fi is actually coming from my cell phone hotspot and the Ethernet is coming from the office connection. And right here it says network bonding and you just tap it on. Look at that. It's as simple as that. Actually, it's not. <laughs> Let's go into the gear icon. We click on network and then you see up here network bonding. Network bonding is provided by Speedify and it's on right now. But if you click on the gear, you'll see it's Speedify. This is a beta right now. And there's, it gives you a free account by default. But if you sign in, there's different levels of service through Speedify. You can have uh, your basic level of service. Sometimes you can buy a year's worth of service and save a whole bunch of money. And uh, there was one time I bought three years worth of service during COVID, um, saved a whole lot of money. Um, but then also there's higher tiers of service. So if you're going to be doing bonding a lot, you can pay for a higher tier of service that gives you a dedicated server and makes the bonding more reliable and more resilient. So that is what I recommend. If bonding is something you're really going to need, uh, elevate yourself to the higher uh, account status and get that. Uh, but if you just want to try it out, you can do that right here. So you can see right here, server, the fastest server. I don't think, you, oh, you can click on it and you can pick a server in an area. So if you are sort of restricted where you're at, you can pick a server somewhere else. Uh, you can turn encryption on or off. The bonding mode currently is speed, redundant and streaming. Make sure you set this to streaming because it's a streaming appliance. <laughs> so we're not interested in the fastest speed. What we're interested is is in resiliency. It's not redundant. So redundant would be one and then you could fail over to another one. Streaming means it's sending the packets across both all the time. So we're going to change that to streaming right there. And then we can even do a speed test. There we go. 23 megabits per second up. And that is something that I really want to see. I want to see over 20 because I know here in my office, I usually get 19 or so. So I'm getting a little bit more, but I know that I'm also using two different services. So the goal here is not taking these two things and stacking them. The goal is spreading my data across them for redundancy. So if you're streaming and you do bonding, remember, it's not about taking your bandwidth and quadrupling it. It's about making sure that you have the ability to get your signal through. And of course, if you're streaming five megabits a second, then 22 is plenty of headroom over what you're really going to need. And 22 is plenty enough speed and you're not looking to get even more speed. Additional speed doesn't help you. I'm gonna turn that off. So a couple of the other things we have here. It supports OBSBOT webcams through NDI and UVC, including PTZ control, AI human tracking, and recording OBSBOT videos. 
and it enables OSE capability and provides a simple layout for OS touch OSE. You can create single view screens on the web interface. If a signal drops out, now there's a spot where you can set a default backup image for those inputs. Now the drop down control page includes auto rotate and locking so that it doesn't automatically rotate if you're in a situation where the camera where the director mini is getting bounced around as well as checking the device status and your bonding status as well. The audio mixer now includes the ability for your microphone jack as well as your Bluetooth and USB audio to be set per scene or globally, whereas before it was just certain inputs. If you're doing a live show and you're incorporating live comments, now you can select one live comment as an overlay in the video feed when streaming to social media. The scenes down at the bottom of the screen here, you could make them smaller before, but now you can make them bigger. So if there's small details in there, now you can make that a whole lot easier to see on the five inch director mini screen. The scoreboards also offer more capability in terms of the game time format, including hours, minutes, and seconds, minutes, and seconds. There's a lot more capability here as well. If you're digging into Zoom and bringing in Zoom guests, now it supports receiving SRT and NDI streams from Zoom ISO. It supports receiving full NDI streams. It supports accessing a web UI via HTTP and HTTPS. Now it also supports the ability to have an RTMP stream come directly into the Director Mini without having to go through a third party service, perfect for your GoPro or other little action camera to stream directly into your Director Mini. It supports controlling PTZ and phone camera sources in preview as opposed to having them make them into program in order to be able to control them. And right here, now you're able to select which layer you're going to select. Instead of just tapping on it like this, now if you select this, it lets you pick which layer you're actually selecting when you have multiple full screen layers. The USB audio now also supports 24-bit and 32-bit monitoring such as from Rode USB microphones. When you're doing graphics and you need to match a corporate color or an official color, the ability to type in a hex code, RGB index values or HSL values will get you right to where you need to be. When it comes to streaming outputs, now you can do one NDI and one RTMP or SRT at the same time. When using the on-screen annotation, there's a lot more features in terms of what you can do and increase capability and also changes in the auto clear time. If you're using an even more powerful online graphics tool, now you can load a web page as your graphic. Just type in the URL and bring it in. The Director Mini now supports two replay cameras with quick replay and event replay. Just remember to dig into your settings and go into the replay so that you can say, how big is the buffer? Do you actually want to archive 20 seconds? Which cameras you're going to have? The duration of the replay, like how far back to go? as well as what you want to do and the overlay replay watermark. There's also a stinger transition and you can select how you want the audio to be routed. Do you want the replay audio? Do you not want the replay audio? And if you're doing two replays, do you want them side by side? This is really cool. Here on the produce page, you've got your replay settings available here as well. And this is what the replay looks like, <laughs> especially when it finishes. If you use the web interface, there are a couple new pages where you've got a produce, you've got an encode page for your first and second encoding, stream page as to where you want things to go, a record page, a media page, and your system page. Then down underneath the main program, you've got separate tabs for your graphics, your audio mixer, your background music, shortcuts, fade to black, and your live comments. And if you've got multiple monitors, you can now break some of these dashboards out into their own windows. Well, this has been my walkthrough, the Director Mini 24687 firmware update. Lots of really cool features in here, and I'm sure something in here is going to help you. As always, my name is Anthony Barocas. Thanks for watching.